It's Hop Along Cassidy. With action and suspense, out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hop Along Cassidy. This famous hero thrills his 60 million fans with action and dangerous adventure. In the role of Hopalong Cassidy is the popular star of the motion picture series, William Boyd. And appearing as that laughable old character, California, is Andy Clyde. Now to our story, The Voice of the Dead. California Carlson doesn't often get letters, particularly since he withdrew his application from the Matrimonial Bureau. So the legal-looking envelope that came to the Bar 20 addressed to him was something to get excited about, even before he looked at its exciting contents. Dear Mr. Carlson, I regret to inform you that your cousin, Mr. Thomas Baxter, has passed on. Your presence is required at the Boxo Ranch in the above county, two weeks from date for the reading of the will. The other beneficiaries have been notified. I'm looking forward to serving you in any way possible. Very truly yours, David J. Potter, Attorney at Law, Executor. But the two weeks seemed more like two years to California until the night finally arrived when he and Hoppy rode up to the gate of the box O. Hoppy wasn't quite as enthusiastic. I just made a weighty decision, California. Yeah, what's that? Huh? I must love you like a brother. I don't believe there's another man in the county I'd be out with, riding around in the middle of the night in this kind of weather. Well, here's the gate. What's that sign read? Hmm, Box O Ranch. Visitors welcome. Tom Baxter, owner. Good old Tom. Real hospitable fella right here. Like to folks dropped in and friendly like. Hold it. Someone's shooting at us from the ridge up there. Get down. I'm down already. Flat in my face. There he is. He's going back over the ridge. Well, he's out of range for a six gun. Let me get my Winchester. No I'll... use now. He's gone. Well, I'll be. Yeah, so will I. Visitors welcome, huh? Good old cousin Tom. Yeah, you know, Hoppy, maybe you're right about that will. The old bar 20 looks better all the time. Now, why don't we? No. What use I got for money? Oh, come on. Let's mosey back home and forget it, huh? Five minutes ago, I'd take me up on it, California. But right now, you couldn't keep me away from the box o with a team of wild horses. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and the voice of the dead. It's almost an hour since the mysterious rider fired on Hoppy in California at the gate of the Box O Ranch. And as they mount the rickety steps of the old ranch house, California is more willing than ever to forget his share of the Baxter fortune and go back to the Bar 20. Listen to that thunder. Consarn it, Hoppy, we got no business here. I don't like this place. <laughs> you better learn to like it, California. For all you know, you might own it. Well, I'll sell it right now for ten cents. And if you try hard, you could work me down to a nickel. Uh, uh, good evening, ma'am. What do you want? How do you do, ma'am? We're, uh... I'm sorry we don't take in strangers. If you got caught out in a storm, it's no fault of mine. Oh, now, now wait a minute. Uh, I'm California Carson. Uh, I'm supposed to be here. Oh. What about your friend here? I'm Hopalong Cassidy, ma'am. We'd appreciate it if you could... That uh... will be up to Mr. Potter to decide. This is a ranch house, not a hotel. Well, don't stand there. Come in. Yes, sir. <clears throat> it's a sin, that's what it is. Poor Mr. Tom, hardly cold in his grave, and everybody flocking around to see what they can get, like a pack of coyotes. Coyotes? No way. Take it minute, easy, uh... California. Where do you want us to put our things, Mrs., uh... Hackett. Miss Matilda Hackett. Hmm. 
Your room is at the head of the stairway, and you can take your horses out there to the barn. Mr. Potter's in the study. You better see him first. I wash my hands. <laughs> Boxhole Ranch. Visitors, welcome. Nice, friendly reception we got, California. <laughs> first time I've been called a coyote by an old buzzard like that. Or... <laughs> Come on, we better talk to Mr. Potter. And keep your hand close to your hip. He might be even more hospitable than Miss Hackett. Wait a minute, what's that? Must be Mr. Potter. Sounds like... Quiet. Was, uh... I, want it, I want it now. I'm simply trying to be reasonable, I'm Ralph. Through. I'm through being reasonable. I need that money and there's no reason why I can't get an advance. My father left me a share of his estate and I want it now. Why can't you wait until the will is read? That's none of your business, Porter. I think I know why, Ralph. You've been gambling in town. All right, so I have. And I've got to pay Ogden off tonight. Well, you can't pay him off. That's all there is to it. All right, Potter. Call me when Cousin Phineas gets here. I don't want to be late for that reading. Well, uh, 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 I'm uh, Cousin California Carlson. This here's Hopalong Cassidy. How do you do? Hello. Hmm. I'm afraid I must apologize for Ralph, gentlemen. He's not like his father. I'm David Potter. How do you do? We just got in, Mr. Potter. I wonder if you've uh, got an extra place for me. <laughs> of course. There's a double bed in the room upstairs. You're perfectly welcome to it. Thanks. According to Mr. Baxter's instructions, the will's to be read tonight. We'll proceed with the reading when all the beneficiaries are here. Mm -hmm. uh, when do you reckon that'll be, Mr. Potter? Well, they've all arrived except Cousin Phineas Phipps. He ought to be here any minute. Then we'll get together in the library. Good. Shall we take our stuff upstairs, California? Uh, you go ahead, Hoppy. Reckon I'll go out to the barn and look after the horses. At a time like this, I always feel like I ought to be in the good side of my horse. <laughs> Feel a mite better without the heavy pack, huh? Hmm. Now, hang the pack saddle up. And... They can't do that. Uh-uh. Who are you? Josh Coulter. Uh, oh. I, I can't do what? Uh, what you doing, Can't Hang no tack on the walls, and if you've got the sense of a barn-born doggy, you'll heist your saddle back onto your hoss and get both you and that gun-toting cowboy you rode up with. Joshua! Uh, uh, yes, Miss Ruth? I think Miss Hackett needs you at the house. Yes, Miss Ruth. Uh, remember what I said. Pop. Pop? Why, i Don't mind Joshua, Mr. Carlson. He's been acting that way ever since my father died. Well, maybe so. Uh, uh, you would be uh, Ruth Baxter then, huh? <laughs> Mighty glad to know you, Miss. I'm afraid I'll have to apologize for all of us. There's something very strange going on here, Mr. Carlson. Oh, I don't know, Miss Ruth. We ain't noticed nothing out of the ordinary. That is, nothing except a rider that tries to kill us at the ranch gate. A housekeeper who just about bites our heads off at the front door. Your brother Ralph spitting in our faces up in the house. And now this old horn told us... I know. Me... I'm glad you and Mr. Cassidy are here. I think we're going to need you. California. Yeah, Hoppy. Cousin Phineas just arrived. We're meeting in the library for the reading of the will in five minutes. <laughs> Now that we're here, I'll read the will. All right, I'm good. glad to hear that. It's right. very simple, right to the point. I, Thomas Baxter, being of sound mind and not acting under duress, do hereby declare this to be my last will and testament. My property and all my holdings shall be equally divided between my daughter, Ruth Baxter, my son, Ralph Baxter, California Carlson, Matilda Hackett, Joshua Coulter, and Phineas Bitt. Rather we unusual. With the proviso that should any of these people die... His or her share shall be divided among the remaining legatees. What? Why, why, that's utter insanity, Mr. Potter. <laughs> What's what wrong with it, Cousin Phineas? Why, why, it's not like Cousin Thomas at all. Why, it's it's an instrument of the devil. A temptation I to think work. I know what you mean, Cousin Phineas. Huh? I'm afraid I don't, Mr. Cassidy. Well, as it stands now, six people divide the estate equally. If one dies, the rest get his share. It might be a temptation for someone to, uh, well, whittle down the number of beneficiaries. That's just what I mean. Oh, I know it sounds pretty brutal, but we might as well face the facts. Uh, Mr. Potter, uh, seeing as we all live a spell longer, what do we get? 
Uh, not much, I'm afraid. Hmm. The land's practically worthless, and there's a big bank loan to be paid off. Uh, however, I could manage to raise something for the beneficiaries if they'd all agree to sell. All right, let's find out what they'll do. Good idea. Please answer as I call your name. Well, I, for one, feel that... This now, is... Matilda Hackett. Well, yes, if you think it's best, Mr. Potter. Ralph Baxter? There's nothing else to do. I'll sell. Ruth Baxter? I won't sell. Mm-hmm. Any particular reason? That's quite right, all right. It's up to you, my dear. Uh, Joshua Colfer. Speak up, Josh. I'll sell. California Carlson. Well, Mr. Potter, I've given this a lot of thought. And I... Won't sell. I said, uh... Huh? Uh, that's right, yeah. No sense in selling. No, no sense at all. Well, well that makes three for selling and two against. Well, looks like it's up to you, Cousin Phineas. Oh, close that window. Look out for that lamp that's going over. Stop. There goes the light. Where's all the right, let it go. Take it easy. Don't, 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 don't. Sounded like uh, a shot. Hurry up with that light. Hurry, uh, hurry. There we are. Get... Hold the lamp steady now. Mm, there. I'm sure oh, I heard a goodness. shot. Oh, I was probably a shutter banging. Now, let's get on with the vote. Very well. Cousin Phineas, it's up to you. Cousin Phineas. What's wrong, Mr. Potter? Phineas. He's... he's dead. Then there was a shot. It, it came through the window. Let's go out and take a look. Come on, everyone. Ruth, look out. I told you, Hoppy, we should have turned back at the gate there. Take it easy. You aren't dead yet. Nothing out here. Well, of course there isn't. You expect the killer to hang around and wait for us? It came through the window here. I'm I'm sure of it. Well, right now, I'm not sure of anything. What do you mean? Now, let's see. It could have come through the window. Phineas was sitting right in that chair there. And wait a minute. What's, What's wrong, Huffy? Take a look through the window here, Mr. Potter. Huh? What's the matter, Mr. Cassidy? In there by the table. Good Lord, the body. Huh? Phineas, his body's gone. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and the voice of the dead. There is tension and fear in the Boxo Ranch House now as the five remaining heirs to the estate of Tom Baxter retire for the night. California is less willing than ever to claim his share of the estate now as he and Hoppy talk to Ruth Baxter in their room. So you think there was something strange about your father's death, Miss Ruth? I know there was, Mr. Cassidy. I think my father was murdered. Murdered? Uh, But uh, but he died right there in that bed. Because someone poisoned him. Slowly, over a long period of time. I think he knew it, too, toward the end. But why would anyone kill him? They wanted the ranch. Yet, according to Mr. Potter, it's practically worthless. That's what Mr. Potter says. I don't believe it. I've tried to get an accounting of income and expenses, but Mr. Potter says there isn't any such thing. My father was a businessman, Mr. Cassidy. He wouldn't run his ranch without a set of books. Hmm. But your father never said anything? Oh, no. He couldn't talk near the end. Just lay in his bed here reading that book of Channing's essays on the table there. You see, he was partly paralyzed. It affected his speech. Poison, huh? I wonder if... It's that Matilda Hackett critter, Hoppy. She's the cook, ain't she? And poisoning folks is probably a hobby. I think it goes farther than that, California. You say this is the book your father always read, Miss Ruth? Yes. Channing was a favorite of his. It looks pretty well thumbed over, especially this section here. Hmm. Look at that. What is it, Hoppy? It's like Mr. Baxter underlined a passage here. All wavery, as if you can hardly hold a pencil. Well, that's strange. What does it say? Thank heaven for books. They are the voices of the distant and the dead. Books. The voices of the dead. I wonder if he was trying to tell us something. Someone was listening at that door there. Uh, there's no one there now. Uh, I guess whoever was listening found out what he wanted to know. Mice, maybe. Well, if it's mice, they sure have big feet. Get your britches on. Ain't never hit them off. Not in this house. Light the lamp. Yeah, coming up. Con 
and Sharnik went out. Shucks went out again. What's the matter? I keep scratching matches and they keep blowing out. There's a powerful draft coming from somewhere. Well, that's funny. The window shut, so is the door. Try another one. Mm, you see what I mean? Yeah. The draft's coming right straight out of the wall. From under this picture of old Tom Baxter here. Now what you up to? It is hollow. There's a passageway behind this wall here. And I'll bet this panel under the picture is the door. Well, doggone. What did old Tom Baxter be doing with a contraption like that? The box was built during the Indian trouble. Probably protection for the women folk. There ought to be a catch here somewhere. Wait. What's that? Sounds like someone's down the library. Take a look out the window here. There's a light down there. Yeah, from the library. Wonder who it is. Oh, I ain't too curious. Come on, we can climb down the trellis here onto the porch. I'd like to take a peek through that library window. Easy now. Can you see? Not yet. Now. Ah. What is it? Take a look. Well, I'll be... It's Ralph. Yeah. What's he doing at the desk? Looking over a set of books. Miss Ruth was right. The old man did keep records on the ranch here. Look. He's walking over to the fireplace. He's going to burn them. Hold it. You ain't going to let him. Wait, I said. Yeah, that's what I thought. He's putting them away. Those stones under the hearth are loose. The old man kept his books hidden underneath. What you going to do, Hoppy? Wait here till he's gone. Can I have a look at those ledgers? <laughs> Well, Mr. Potter. A brother late, aren't you, Ralph? I might say the same of you. And uh, I hate to be overly curious, Potter, but I'd like to know what you're doing in my room. I want to talk to you. Oh? Yes, I have certain suspicions about what's going on here, and I think it's fair that I face them out with you before I take them elsewhere. Go on, Potter. I'm interested. Where did you go just now? To the library. Why? I couldn't sleep. I uh, thought some reading would relax me. Any more questions? You'd better ask them now, because when you're finished, I've got a few myself. One more question. Why did you kill Cousin Phineas? <laughs> oh, that's very strange. <laughs> that's the first question I was going to ask you. Drop it, Ralph. I think I know why you went down to the library. Go on. Phineas was shot from inside the room. I found this on the floor. A revolver cartridge case. It was under your chair. Well, you're changing your tactics a little, aren't you? Now it's a frame. You're trying to hang the killing on me. Well, you won't get very far, I'm afraid. I told you I'm trying to be fair with you, Ralph. <laughs> There's an old saying, Potter. Thank heaven for books. They are the voices of the distant and the dead. Mean anything to you? Where'd you hear that? Oh, yeah. Just happened to overhear it tonight, and it gave me an idea. I looked up my father's ranch accounts down in the library. Accounts? How did... Never mind how I found them. And they told me a lot. Number one, there are 1,500 head of cattle missing. Run off somewhere waiting for the beneficiaries to sell out. Number two, there's oil on the property. Five eastern outfits are angling to buy it right now. And number three, you're the crook who killed my father and who's trying to hoodwink us into selling. That's a pretty serious charge, Ralph. I'm glad you're laying it on the line because the one thing I want to do is get you up in court to repeat it. Don't worry, I will. You know, there's another old saying, Ralph. The best defense is a first-class attack. You've heard that one too, haven't you? Get out of my room. I advise you to be around in the morning when the sheriff gets here. Good night, Ralph. Going someplace, Mr. Potter? Oh, Cassidy. Hey, he put traffic around this house for three in the morning. I've been talking to Ralph. I'm very tired. Do you mind if I... I'll only be a minute. What about Ralph? I... I knew he was a disgrace to his father, Cassidy, but... Until now, I couldn't believe he was a murderer. Are you sure? Absolutely. I'd rather not say any more until the sheriff gets here in the morning, so if you don't mind... What was that? It came from Ralph's room. The door's locked. Stand back. Poppy! Well, Potter, do you still think Ralph's a murderer? Good Lord, he's dead. Yeah. Shot while he was sitting in this chair here. But the room was locked. Doors and windows, both. 
How could anyone I get in here? I got a pretty good idea how, California. Come on out in the hall. Stay right there, Potter. I'll do no such thing. Did you hear what I said? Well, all right, Cassidy, if you think so. What is it, Hoppy? That secret passageway runs right through the wall opposite the chair. Stay flat against it and you'll be safe. Now listen. I want you to put Potter in the other chair. Keep him there, you understand? Then start asking him questions. You know what to say. Yeah, but what are you going to... Wait a minute. Oh, Miss Ruth. Mr. Cassidy, I heard the shot. It's your brother. Ralph? What's happened? I've no time to explain now. I need your help. Do what I told you, California. And you better keep your gun handy. I don't think Potter will like sitting in that chair after you start asking those questions. See here, Carlson, I refuse... Easy now, Mr. Potter. Just lean back in your chair there and relax. Will you put down that gun? Nope. Now let's get back to the story, Mr. Potter. Hoppy and I seen in the books that someone struck oil up in Boulder Canyon and ranch property, right? Right. Then someone figures how handy it'd be if old Tom Baxter was to up and die. Right? Will you shut up? Nope, so someone sees to it that old Tom dies of a mysterious stomach ailment, runs off his stock and tries to bluff the heirs into selling out. Please, Carlson, not here, I tell you. Nope. Not unless you want to tell me who your partner is, Mr. Potter. I, I can't talk here. Where's Cassidy? Pretty busy right now, checking on something else. Uh, shall we start back at the beginning again, Mr. Potter? I'm sure the door to the passageway is here under the picture. You say you can't remember? I don't know anything about it, Mr. Cassidy. What beats me how you could grow up in this house and not know about it. We weren't allowed in here as children. Why? Father had a strange feeling about that picture. We, we were never allowed to touch it. Wait, that's it, the picture. What do you mean? Let's see now. Spring is obviously underneath. I can't move it. <gasps> Look. There she goes. A sliding panel. Why, well, I never would have believed. Shh. You think he's in there? Yeah. Trying to decide whether or not to kill Potter before California makes him talk. Maybe you better stay here. Not on your life. I'm going with you. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and the voice of the dead. The answer to the mysterious murders at the Box Old Ranch House isn't far off now as California holds David Potter at gunpoint in the room where Ralph Baxter was killed. Knowing that behind the wall at his back, the killer is ready to fire if Potter starts to talk. Meanwhile, Hoppy and Ruth work their way down the secret passageway toward the murderer's hiding place. Hold it. Oh, can you see anything? Listen. I'm getting tired of waiting, Potter. When you reckon you're going to tell me who your partner is, will you be reasonable, Carlson? No. It's right around this corner. Stay right here. All right. Good luck, Hoppy. Thanks. I ain't no reasonable move tonight, Mr. Potter. You were conniving with someone to grab off this ranch. You wasn't exactly reasonable about poor old Finney's picture Ralph Baxter there, was it? Please, Carlson, he'll kill me if I... And maybe if he don't, I will. Half past in the morning and sometimes I don't think straight when I miss my sleep. No, you're going to talk or no? All right. All right, I'll talk, Carlson. Put down that gun. I said put it down. Oh, Hoppy! That's all right, Miss Ruth. Hoppy, you all right? Yeah, take Potter back to our room and tell him his partner just retired from business. <laughs> Turn him over, California. Right, Hoppy. Uh, there you go. Cousin Phineas. Suffering snakes. Oh, uh, I thought you... Yeah, so did I. That was quite an act you pulled down the library, Potter. It was his idea. He wanted to play it safe. So you fired into the floor and hustled us all out on the porch while the body disappeared, huh? That's right. Oh, please, Cassidy, I, I can't talk now. I don't blame you. 
Better save your breath for the story you're going to tell the sheriff when he gets here. Ruth. Yes? Better get everybody in here. Better get everybody in here. I want to tell them they can rest easy now. I think we've lost our last beneficiary. Uh, excuse me, Hoppy. Huh? He just lost one more. Me. Now, wait a minute, California. You know you're entitled nope, to... Nope, not me. I learned a good lesson here at the box hall, Hoppy. It's better to be a live cowpoke than a dead millionaire. <laughs> It was really turnabout California leading Hoppy into trouble. Now he can't do so much complaining next time Hoppy stumbles onto some happening that needs close watching and a ready gun. These partners will be riding out again soon into a threatening episode with an ambushed stagecoach. Hop Along Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. The Voice of the Dead was adapted for radio by Harold Swanton. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production.